Swedish radio. Here. Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Secretary General. What does it mean in concrete terms that uh, Swedish NATO membership is a top priority, as you said yesterday? Uh, and the second question, how included is Sweden for the NATO future plans for the Baltic Sea? Uh, do Finland is approaching NATO membership faster than Sweden? Well, I didn't get the last question. Uh, how does it mean in concrete terms for the NATO plans for Baltic Sea that uh, Finland is approaching a NATO membership faster than Sweden? So first of all, uh, I, I, I'm absolutely confident that uh, also Sweden will become a full member of this alliance. Uh, second, it is a top priority for me, uh, meaning that I really believe that it will be good for uh, NATO, it will be good for Finland, it will be good for Sweden, it will be good for all of us uh, to have Finland and Sweden in as quickly as possible. That's also the reason why I worked hard to get the agreement uh, 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 last year, which was an historic uh, decision that all NATO allies, also Turkey and Hungary, made to invite Finland and Sweden. And since then, since, uh, since uh, uh, June last year, we have had the quickest accession process in NATO's modern history. Because we have to remember that Finland and Sweden applied in May, only in June they were invited, and since then, uh, uh, Finland and Sweden has had a, a, a totally new position in NATO because they ha now have the position as invitees, meaning that they sit at the NATO table. Uh, we integrate in, uh, Finland and Sweden more and more into NATO's civilian and military structures, and this integration process will take some time with military planning, with capability targets, and, and that integration process has not been postponed uh, by... Uh, uh, the fact that the ratification has taken a bit more time than we hoped. So, so the military in, in, integration goes on, regardless of, in a way, uh, 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 the, uh, the fact that uh, Hungary and, uh, and, and, uh, and Turkey has not ratified, because part of being invitee means that you can be in, in, integrated into NATO's military structures, including uh, interim capability targets. So the military planning, the integration process, uh, is something which is moving on, uh, uh, not delayed by uh, 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 the ratification uh, process. Um, um, uh, second uh, is that, uh, for me, this is a top priority, meaning that I spent, uh, so I did what I could together with, with, Prem, with, with President Saul Ninisto, with, uh, at that time, uh, uh, Prime Minister Madalena Andersson, uh, and, and, and with the new government in Sweden, we are continuing to work together closer to ensure uh, the agreement, uh, the invitation, and now the uh, integration into NATO's civilian and military structures, and then uh, the ratification. So far, 28 has ratified. I went to Ankara, uh, I think it's now uh, uh, three or four weeks ago. Uh, we had a good meeting with uh, President Erdogan. That was the meeting where he made it clear that he is ready to, uh, or Turkey is ready to ratify um, Finland. Uh, um, and I welcome that, uh, that we now see uh, uh, progress on the ratification of Finland, and hopefully that will happen very soon. Um, then on Sweden, uh, President Erdogan in the meeting agreed uh, to restart the process, uh, and also in the meetings of uh, what we call the permanent mechanism, uh, where Finland, Sweden, uh, Turkey um, uh, meet, and they met uh, under my auspices here at the NATO headquarters a few days ago, uh, and that also then led to the formal announcement of the uh, uh, decision to move on with the ratification of Finland. Uh, but of course, in uh, that meeting, we also then are able to address how to make progress uh, on the ratification of Sweden. And we'll continue to meet. I spoke again with, uh, with the President Erdogan on Friday, uh, and we uh, again agreed uh, to continue the consultations and, uh, and the meetings uh, to ensure that we can also make uh, progress on the ratification of uh, of uh, Sweden. Then I spoke this morning with the uh, president, uh, no, sorry, with, uh, with uh, the foreign minister of, uh, of Hungary, uh, um, Petr Sziarto, and, uh, and, and he also confirmed that uh, there will be a vote uh, on the 27th of uh, March uh, on, uh, in, the, in the Hungarian parliament on the ratification of Finland, and we'll continue then to work on progress, making progress on the ratification of, uh, of uh, Sweden. Interfax Ukraine, lady with the red scarf. You have a microphone there. Oh, 
Thank you, Anna. Uh, news agency, Ukrainian news agency, Interfax Ukraine, Irina Sumer. Follow up on NATO Ukraine Commission. Secretary General, is it means that we can see from now on that such kind of meeting will take place regularly? on a regular basis, and even that participation of the president, Ukrainian president, Mr. Zelensky in Vilnius, also will take place in this format, NATO-Ukraine Commission. And second question is, don't you think that time came to denounce NATO-Russia-Rome agreement, which established also NATO-Russia Council? Thank you. NATO allies worked for a meaningful dialogue with uh, Russia for many, many years. Russia has walked away from that dialogue, so that's not uh, functioning. It, 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 it is not possible to have a meaningful dialogue with Russia uh, when they are conducting a legal war of aggression against uh, uh, Ukraine. Uh, but we used the NATO-Russia Council uh, 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 up till the invasion. Uh, we have to remember that we actually met in this building uh, 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 in January, uh, just a few weeks before the invasion, to try to uh, convince and to try to use all uh, diplomatic and political channels to prevent uh, uh, President Putin, Russia, for, from uh, uh, implementing to, to follow through on their plans to invade uh, Ukraine. So, so the, the NATO-Russia Council was an important instrument uh, in our efforts to try to establish some kind of meaningful dialogue with uh, Russia. We used it to try to prevent the invasion of, uh, of Ukraine, but since the invasion, uh, uh, this has no meaning. Uh, uh, we cannot have any meaningful dialogue with a country that is uh, uh, responsible for an uh, illegal war of aggression uh, against the neighbor uh, Ukraine. Um, so, so we don't have meetings, of course, in this council now. Then when it comes to the NATO Ukraine um, uh, council, uh, we, uh, uh, this, is, this is an established framework. I have the mandate to convene it. Uh, I have, in respect for the, the issues that uh, uh, Hungary has raised. I have uh, not convened that for some time, uh, but now I will continue to convene the, the, the meetings of the, of the NATO Ukraine uh, uh, Council, uh, the Commission, sorry, uh, and, uh, and I will uh, start with a meeting at the foreign ministerial meeting. I have not planned any more meetings, but of course this will not be a, a one, a one off event. We will continue to have meetings. Uh, when it comes to the um, the summit, we have not decided uh, finally on the formats, but I have made it clear that uh, I will invite uh, President uh, Zelensky uh, to the summit. Uh, exactly in what format we will meet, that uh, has not yet been decided. Bloomberg. Thank you so much, Natalia Drozdjak from Bloomberg. I just want to follow up on the, the question about Sweden's ratification. Do you still expect Sweden to be ratified by both Turkey and Hungary um, by Vilnius? And then secondly, on um, the question about uh, MiG fighter jets, Poland and Slovakia pledged, what impact do you expect this to have on the battlefield? And have any allies expressed concern about these deliveries, um, especially with regards to escalation? Thank you. Well, on, on Finland, uh, based on what has been announced both from uh, uh, Hungary, and Turkey, the two allies that have not yet ratified the Finnish accession protocol, uh, I, I expect that uh, uh, they can become members uh, before the, um, the Turkish election, uh, because, uh, uh, because um, Finland, uh, sorry, Hungary has made it clear that they will vote uh, on this in the, in, the, in, the, in the Hungarian parliament on the 27th of March. Uh, so that's a base, what I say on what they have uh, publicly said and also told, uh, told, told me. Uh, and also, uh, um, Turkey uh, has made it clear that the plan is to uh, ratify before the Turkish parliament uh, goes into recess ahead of the Turkish uh, election. Of course, I cannot guarantee on behalf of national parliaments. At the end of the day, it's national parliaments that make the, the decisions. And I've been a parliamentarian and also prime minister myself. I'm always very careful not speaking on behalf of parliaments. Parliaments are sovereign bodies. They make their own decisions. But at least that's what has been announced. And I, based on those plans and those announcements, uh, Finland will be member very soon and before the uh, uh, Turkish uh, elections or before the Turkish parliament goes into recess based on what they have said. Um, then uh, uh, on Sweden, uh, I will not give you any exact dates. 
Uh, but I'll just tell you that this is a top priority, uh, and I will work hard uh, to ensure that also uh, Sweden uh, becomes a full member uh, and that the ratification process can be finalized as soon as possible. That's the reason why I, I traveled to Ankara, that's the reason why I also spent uh, some time in, in Stockholm, uh, in Helsinki, and also convened the, the, uh, the um, trilateral uh, permanent mechanism. Uh, here at NATO and will continue to engage with all these countries to ensure that we have the quickest possible ratification also of, uh, of, uh, of Sweden. Answer. Gentlemen, glasses. Yeah, thanks. Yes, sorry. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Secretary General, in the Mediterranean, uh, migration is reaching a level unseen since the 2015 crisis. Uh, Italy has recent, recently linked this phenomenon with an intentional rational destabilization strategy. And uh, as you know, the strategic concept states a 360 degrees approach to security and see the MED as a critical theater. Now, the question is, do you accept that the southern border can be at risk because of migration used as a hybrid weapon? And is uh, NATO ready uh, to do more in, uh, in that area? And secondly, if I may, um, would you be available for a second mandate? I mean, for a prolongation again of your mandate, maybe? Uh, uh, first, uh, on the south, um, well, NATO has uh, significant uh, presence in the Mediterranean uh, and in the south uh, to address instability, to fight terrorism, and we also support efforts of the European Union to deal with the uh, illegal migration. We, for instance, have um, a, a naval presence uh, in the Aegean Sea uh, to help to implement the, um, the agreement between Turkey and uh, the European Union uh, on uh, illegal migration. I've been there since, uh, for, for several uh, years. We're also working with partners um, like uh, uh, Mauritania, uh, uh, like uh, Tunisia and others to help them build their defense and security institutions to stabilize their own countries. That's to address the root causes of the uh, uh, migration challenge. Uh, so we are working in many different ways. Uh, and of course, we also see that uh, we see uh, increased Russian presence in, what we, in, in the South or in Africa, uh, and not least with the Wagner Group. Uh, so uh, I think that it just highlights that NATO doesn't have the luxury of choosing either uh, uh, to either focus on one or the other uh, challenge or threat uh, we face. We need to be able to deal with all of them at the same time. Of course, they're in a different nature and, and different in intensity, but NATO has to deal with them at the same time. Uh, also, a lot of what we do on critical infrastructure is also related to the south. There are cables, there are undersea infrastructure also in the Mediterranean. Uh, but of course... Uh, NATO is a, a military alliance, we have our tools, then the European Union, national uh, nations have uh, other tools. Uh, so we don't, we don't have all the tools to address all the issues related to migration, but we support the efforts of, uh, of the European Union and, uh, and individual allies in different uh, ways, and we'll continue to do so, and also step up our uh, work with partners, for instance, uh, or in Africa, uh, and also in Iraq. I met with the Iraqi Iraqi Foreign Minister uh, yesterday, uh, and uh, we have a presence there of a training mission to help Iraq to stabilize their own country, and that's also a way to address the root causes of the, of the uh, uh, illegal migration. Uh, Imedi, Georgia. Uh, thank you very much. Mr. Secretary General, two questions uh, about Georgia. Uh, first, um, uh, as we are waiting for Vilnius summit uh, uh, this um, summer, and for more support uh, from uh, NATO, what can you tell us more about it and overall um, evaluation of 2022? Uh, and also, can you comment on recent developments in uh, Georgia? I mean, um, presentation in Georgian Parliament uh, for an agent draft, and in two days it was voted down. So. Can you comment on this? Thank you very much. Also, I welcome the decision by the Georgian parliament to vote down or to withdraw uh, the draft uh, law on foreign influence or foreign uh, agents uh, because it's uh, incompatible with uh, Euro-Atlantic uh, values and the protection of fundamental uh, freedoms. So I welcome uh, that uh, uh, this proposal was withdrawn and then uh, not supported by the uh, uh, parliament uh, in Tbilisi. 
Uh, I encourage uh, 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 Georgia's uh, political leaders uh, to work together on reforms urgently needed. Uh, and of course, NATO has also worked with uh, the government of Georgia to implement these reforms uh, uh, to strengthen democratic institutions, to strengthen democratic control over the um, security services, uh, and, and also uh, to fight uh, uh, corruption. Uh, the Georgian uh, people have made it very clear that they want a democratic, prosperous uh, Georgia that is integrated into the Euro-Atlantic uh, region, and NATO will continue to be a partner to those aspirations. Okay, we'll go to Icelandic National TV. Your mom, Chris, from Icelandic National Television. Uh, you've talked a lot about Ukraine. Understandably, the focus of the alliance has been has been there for the in recent months. Are you keeping focus on Russia's activities in the high north? Um, and how will the membership, I mean, the eventual membership of Sweden and Finland change the dynamic on the northern flank of the alliance? So Finnish and Swedish membership will strengthen NATO in many different ways. Uh, first of all, it will strengthen the whole of NATO. Uh, and because Finland and Sweden has, uh, have uh, capable armed forces, well-trained, well-equipped, modern uh, uh, armed forces, uh, and, uh, and we have worked together with Finland and Sweden for many years. Uh, uh, they have naval, uh, land, and air forces which are highly capable and will help us also to increase our presence, our awareness, uh, also in the high north. And of course, both Finland and Sweden are Arctic nations. Uh, they know how to operate under Arctic conditions. Uh, and it will also not least increase our ability to uh, to utilize the airspace uh, in, the, in the high north uh, and, uh, and to operate across the borders uh, uh, in, uh, in the Nordic uh, region. Uh, so yes, that is important for uh, the high north, uh, for Hordo NATO, but of course also, for instance, for the Baltic countries. If you just look at the map, you will see that reinforcement, uh, the protection of the Baltic region, uh, will be very different and, uh, and, uh, and NATO will be in a much better place to do that with Finland and Sweden in. And therefore I welcome the fact that all of us have invited them, that Finland will uh, very soon be ratified based on what has been uh, announced from Ankara and from uh, Budapest. And then we will, I will continue to work hard for the uh, quickest possible ratification of uh, also uh, uh, Sweden. Uh, then the High North uh, uh, has mattered for uh, NATO for many years uh, and therefore we have and significant presence there. We have several allies, uh, uh, which are Arctic nations, including uh, Iceland. Um, uh, uh, we have presence uh, uh, in Iceland uh, with uh, uh, um, uh, NATO planes. Uh, um, Iceland uh, is important also when it comes to monitoring, uh, uh, following the uh, Russian military movements up in the high north. Their, their submarines, their ships, their, their, their planes. And allies are also now investing in new modern capabilities, including advanced uh, fifth generation uh, fighter aircraft that will significantly increase our uh, uh, capabilities when it comes to monitoring and surveillance uh, over uh, what's going on in the high uh, north. Uh, more ships, uh, we have more exercises. And I just, last week, I'm, I went together with uh, uh, President Ursula von der Leyen and the Norwegian Prime Minister Jonas Gahr to. Uh, one of the gas facilities, the gas platform troll uh, platform in the North Sea, which is important for Norway, for the Nordic region, but of course also for uh, energy supplies to Europe. 10% uh, of Europe's gas supplies uh, comes from that uh, one uh, platform. Uh, so of course when NATO also stepping up what to do to protect critical infrastructure, that is also uh, very much about the high uh, north. Uh, so uh, yes, high north is, has been, will continue to be of great importance for NATO. Uh, let me also add that climate change will make the high north even more important. The ice is melting, uh, it's possible to operate there uh, uh, more uh, throughout the year and, uh, and that will also increase the strategic importance of the high north. Thank you very much. I know there are more questions but this is all we have time for now. However, uh, you can pick up a hard copy of the annual report on your way out uh, and uh, hope to see as many of you as possible uh, at the annual media reception. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.